Okay. So now, by popular demand, I wanted to show you something that I talked about and promised some of you, which is to show you something about two advanced features of Refine. Yesterday, I used the word reconcile, but there are actually two different actions that you can take. One is called fetch, and the other is called reconcile. So my two examples are, one is to use geolocates online web services to georeference from within Refine. And the other is to use GBIF's name reconciliation services to find the current accepted name for a taxon given the scientific name. And they're two slightly different processes. Uh, what I will do is I will give you a folder for day eight. It'll have the presentations in it. It will also have the recipes for how to do these in it. These recipes also exist in online resources elsewhere, but I figured it's probably a good idea for you to have it <coughs> where it works for Alex's data set so that you don't have to manipulate anything. So these are the recipes, but let me go to refine and do this. First I'll describe it. Our, our first problem is to try to get a georeference from the locality information in Alex's data. So what we need to do, I'll describe it first, is for the locality field, we're going to choose a facet in the menus, facet, and then customized facets. Now this is something we didn't do as an example with me up here. The customized facet allows me to select a facet called facet by blank. What that does, it says, is this field blank or is it not blank? And there are two possible answers, true or false. That allows me to select all of the localities that are not blank. I'm go not going to georeference the ones that are blank. So I'll show you how that's done. Here we are with data, uh, Alex's data set. I need my facets and filters. I need to find my locality field. So if you look right now, the reason I did this is that when I looked in the locality field, I saw many, many, many blanks. And I realized these are probably not ones that I want to georeference right now. I could, but I wouldn't use the locality field. I would need all of this other information and not the locality field. And geolocates web services won't do a georeference unless you have something here. So to use geolocate here, I would have to manipulate these data and provide a value of unknown or something like that here just so geolocate would try to, to georeference it. But I didn't do that. Instead, I did georeferences only for those that had data. And so I needed to make a facet to do that. So I choose the localities menu, then the facet selection, and then customized facets, the one on the bottom. And in customized facets, there are many, many different selections, none of which we showed, but the very last one is facet by blank. When I do that, it shows me that there are two choices, false and true. False means that there is a locality because it's not blank. And true means there is no locality because it is blank. To convince ourselves of that, let's include only the false values. So I've selected false and now I have only those that have localities in them. So that was my first step. I need to prepare to talk to geolocate. Let me switch back to my recipe. And the next step is the fancy one.
The next step, what we're going to do is select the locality field again, but this time we'll do an edit column and do something new. We're going to add column by fetching URLs. And once we're in there, we're going to enter this big, long formula. This big, long formula says, how should we call the geolocate web services? And we do it by using this URL all the way up to here. That's the base URL for the geolocate web services. After that is information about our data. So the formula here, if I interpret it for you in English, is call the web service and tell it that the country is equal to the value of the co-name field after formatting it to be a URL. So we're going to escape the value of the co-name field as a URL. That's what all that says. So the query language for refine has a function in it that says turn a string into a string ready for a URL. Then we're going to do the same thing adding the county value, it will do the same thing adding state value and the same thing adding a locality value. So once we do that we have a URL that's ready for geolocate's web service and we're going to send that to geolocate. So I'll go through this and to do so I will need to copy the formula. Now I have done this in the past already and get this geolocate field. But I'll do it again in the hopes that we do have an internet connection and that it will work. So, my recipe said to select the locality menu, go to the edit column choice, and then choose add column by fetching URLs. If I do that, I will get the dialog box that I need. Come, if I can drive correctly. So here's the box we need. In it, I can give my new column a new name. I already created a geolocate column in the past, so I'm going to just make a brief column name for this version of it called GL. The throttle delay says, how long should I wait between requests? And the reason that is in there is that there are some services that will not answer you if you start going boom, 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 boom. They'll say, this is a denial of service attack. You are threatening me and I will now deny you all access. That would be bad for your georeferencing, so it's better to be a little bit polite. The default value for it is half a second, which is a long time when you're automatically georeferencing. I tested geolocate and how fast does it respond? If I give it a request, how long does it take for it to come back? In a normal circumstances, it's about 60 milliseconds. So doing that, I figured I can set that value much lower than half a second, and I chose 100 milliseconds. And yesterday it worked for me. Geolocate might not like me so much today, but we'll find out. So I'm saying I'm going to send one URL every one-tenth of a second. And then I need to put my expression in here, that whole thing that I copied from my editor. So that's what goes in here. Happily, there's no syntax error. This dialog box tells me if what is in here is well-formed and makes sense. And it does. And then down here, it shows me, if it can, what the result will be. Right now, it says it's an error. The reason is it hasn't gone to the web service yet. It can't tell you what the answer is yet. And that's normal when you do a fetching URL. So the way you accomplish it then is just to click on OK. Now, 
I'm, I think that I will not do this right now. The reason is that I've selected all of the records in Alex's database that have localities. And that's 42,000 of them. If I click that right now, we're going to wait, even at 100 milliseconds a piece, we're going to wait too long, in my opinion. So instead, what I'll do is show you the results I got yesterday when I did this on a subset of Alex's data. But that's how you accomplish it. So, let me first show you the subset of Alex's data that I worked on by adding a facet. And the facet that I used was a text facet where I selected the 504 records where the major field was filled with the value Northern Province. Now, uh, one point to make. I selected only this value and I have my 504 records that I acted on. These data have not been clustered. I have this Northern Province and that one and they're distinct still. I should do my cleanup here before I do the georeferencing, if I'm going to georeference by facets, say country by country, I should clean up my countries first. Otherwise, I'm doing all this labor too many times, more than I need to. But I didn't. In this case, I just chose those values of Northern Province. And it turns out that they're all in Sierra Leone. So now what I'll do is I'll go back and use the same data set, edit column, column by fetching URL, I'll call it GL for geolocate, I'll give it 100 millisecond delay, I'll paste in the URL here. And now it's actually able to tell me the answers. The, the errors that came up before were because we were looking at records that didn't have a locality. And if it didn't have a locality, it couldn't make the call. These all have localities, so it shows here what the URL will be when it calls geolocate. So now we're ready, and I will do this one, hoping that we do have the internet connection. So I've started, and it's trying to call geolocate, and it's telling me how much progress has been made. So the fact that we're still at zero here tells me that we probably have a, a problem with the connection. Last night it took, oh, there it goes. Okay, we have a connection. It took this long to georeference. You can do it. I know you can. <laughs> 